Today I'm going to be going over 10 fragrances to make an unforgettable impression on a first date. Date fragrances is a topic that's uh, talked about quite a bit, but I kind of wanted to dive in a little bit further here and focus on stuff that's going to be really appropriate for a first date, right? Breaking the ice, making, choosing something that is going to leave a memorable first impression, but is also not going to be too out there or too crazy, something that could potentially put someone off. We've got all designers here except for one niche fragrance, so it's all going to be relatively affordable. And if you want to grab any of these for yourself, I will link them up down below. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. This first one, Armani Code Absolute. So this one right here, Here's what's going to happen, okay? You're going to get on that first date. Everything's going to be going well. She's going to smell this for the first time, and you are immediately going to have a second date set up before it's even been talked about. That's all because of the power of Armani Code Absolute. Trust me, it's that easy. Uh, well, okay, maybe it's not that easy. You got to make sure you don't go in there and completely mess it up, but having something like this is really going to help you out, and it's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Vanilla, suede, tonka bean are some of the main notes in this one. It's smooth, it's inviting, it's warming, it's sexy, it's a bit spicy. This here is one of my personal favorites from the entire Armani Code lineup. And this is one where as soon as I first got my nose on it, I knew that it was something special. It wasn't just another flanker that they put out just to put something out and, you know, maybe it would get a little bit of hype but then die off after a year or so. Uh, I knew right away that this was special and, well, I think a lot of other people agree with me because this one is very highly regarded in the community. And I'm so glad to see that. I really am. I'm glad to see that this one is getting the uh, recognition that it deserves. For a couple of reasons. One, I want many people to enjoy it, right? Because I think we all need to work together here. Nothing should be kept a secret or anything like that. And two, I'm happy that it's getting recognition so they don't discontinue this one, at least anytime soon, hopefully. I would hate to see this one go away. So everyone keep loving on Armani Code Absolute and maybe they'll keep it around for a while. Next up, Paco Rabanne Pure XS. That's one little tactic that you can use on a first date is to uh, just be talking and then get real serious all of a sudden. It's almost guaranteed to work like 1% of the time. So if you really want to play your odds and you really want to uh, take a risk, you can do that. Sugar, myrrh, vanilla, boozy notes are some of the main notes. For a Paco Rabanne, this one is really, really unique and very appealing. Now, typically, Paco Rabanne is known for creating kind of loud, boisterous, obnoxious, but not in a bad way, but definitely obnoxious fragrances from the actual scent delivery up to the bottles. We've got the gold bar. We have the uh, trophy bottle. You've, you get the point here. But what I like about Pure XS and also Pure XS Night is they are a bit more subtle, right? There's nothing obnoxious about this bottle. Sure, the original Pure XS has this flask style, which I think is cool, but that's not obnoxious. That's just unique. It is worth noting that in Pure XS Night, they did get rid of this. It's just a regular cap. I would say probably because people come in here and they just go to yank this cap off and it breaks and then you got a whole messed up situation going on there. So that's probably why they took that away. Nonetheless, this one is a sugary, smooth, sweet, gourmand, but also it's kind of uh, fizzy. It's got this cola type of smell. So there's a bit of a freshness. This strikes a really nice balance. If you don't want to go overboard on the sweetness like with Armani Code Absolute or some of the others in this list. This one here just has a really nice middle ground and I think it's really appealing for that reason. This one's great for a close encounter, a situation where you're going to be up and close and personal with someone because it's not too loud, it's not a super strong performer. It's one that will just kind of draw people in. You know, they'll want to get in closer to kind of pick up on different nuances about this one. It's a great conversation starter. It's a great way to break the ice and have you smelling nice for a date. Next up, Spice Bomb Night Vision Eau de Parfum. So this is uh, between Night Vision EDT and EDP is my favorite. Uh, I, I don't mind this one so much. The original Night Vision it just isn't my thing. Now in the grand scheme of things, <laughs> Night Vision Eau de Parfum is still pretty low on the totem pole in terms of ranking up against the other flankers. You know, Extreme, the original, the fresh version, I still prefer those more. However, when it comes down to it, and you're talking about pure, essentially mass appeal, 
pure safeness here, uh, something that's going to be liked by just about anyone out there and also still has kind of a, a warming, inviting, cozy type of thing that you would want for a date. Night Vision Eau de Parfum checks off the boxes. You could throw in Spice Bomb Extreme and that would work as well, but I think this one plays it even more safe than that. This one has apple, cardamom, pistachio as some of the main notes. Quite an interesting note breakdown and you can't forget nutty notes. Yeah, this one has nutty notes. Look on Fragrantica, right up next to uh, pistachio, nutty notes. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it, it's kind of a weird note breakdown. Okay, a little bit different. You don't really get too much of a pistachio, but it's there a little bit, I suppose. This has kind of your uh, bubblegummy, uh, traditional, new, modern men's smell about it. So it's taking on those sweet facets and that kind of uh, bubblegummy sweetness, that sort of thing that's popular in a lot of other things out there. And Night Vision EDT is the same way, even more so. I prefer the Eau de Parfum because it kind of uh, takes a little bit more of a different twist on that DNA. So again, from a fragrance enthusiast standpoint, you may not love this one, but when it comes down to making a great first impression, this will work well just about every time. It's, it's hard to beat. Next up, we're gonna cover that one and only niche fragrance in this list. It's probably pretty obvious, uh, but you know, here it is anyway. Parfums de Marly, Leighton. I love Leighton, you know? Every time I get a chance to feature it, for the most part, I do. I never really try to exclude this one like I do with <laughs> some other niche fragrances. And actually, some other designer fragrances as well. You know, the Creed Aventuses and the Dior Sauvages and all of those types of fragrances. Yeah, I could probably put those in just about every other top 10 video, but I choose not to. Why? Because they are talked about all over the place and I don't want to bore you guys even more. However, even though Leighton is also very popular, the popularity of this one as of right now is much more accepted. And I think Aventus was the same way at one point, Sauvage was the same way at one point. Those got burnt out. Maybe at some point Leighton will get burnt out as well, but as of right now, People love when Leighton shows up in videos. So, you know, I'm gonna keep putting it in them. Why not? Gotta get those views, right? Get those views. Yeah, Leighton, let's go. Really though, the reason why I put it in these videos is because I truly love it. I wouldn't just stuff fragrances in here just because I wanna put them in here for, um, you know, views or whatever. I mean, Leighton is a great scent. It's my top, one of my top three from Parfums de Marly for great reason. Apple, vanilla, cardamom are some of the main notes. The note breakdown itself is not like super out there and weird. It's pretty pretty standard. I mean, apple, vanilla, that's everywhere. Cardamom, that's kind of everywhere, um, especially in designer scents nowadays too, which is awesome. But the scent itself is different and it does separate itself. And what I love that's so unique about this is this minty menthol smell that you pick up on. And that's evident when you smell it from the atomizer it's evident when you spray it. There's just so many nuances about this one that is just so good. It's kind of spicy and oriental. It's smooth and sweet from the vanilla, kind of warming, but you also get a little bit of an apple balance up top to just kind of add a bit of variety. All in all, a great, great first impression scent, a great date night scent. Now, some people will say, well, Leighton for a date, isn't it a bit too strong? And yeah, if you go a lot of sprays, it would be too strong. If you want to wear this on a date, one to two sprays, that's gonna be more than enough. And I don't think that'll be too overboard. I really don't. I don't think it's a big deal. If that does stress you out, then choose something different. But I would say a lot of you out there will probably be comfortable enough with going light on the trigger and wearing this on a date. I don't think it's gonna do any harm. And if you really wanted to, one trick that you can use that I like to do as well to uh, kind of knock it back even more is spray it underneath your shirt, you know, underneath your shirt, underneath your jacket. Uh, that will kind of dampen the scent even more to, you know, kind of have a layer there to cut back on that projection. All in all, fantastic niche scent. And if I were to kind of think of one for a date night, first impressions, Leighton would be it every time. It's not cheap but you can get it on discounters and it will be linked down below like always. And I think at that price, it is worth it. It's an investment for sure, but definitely worth it. Next up, Rojas Man. Yeah, love the name, right? <laughs> yeah, what do we what do we wanna name our next fragrance? Uh, 
you know, we're this, we're this big brand, we're Rojas, you know, this, the scent smells great. We need to come up with a good name for it so it gets out there and everyone talks about it. Oh, what about man? Rojas man. Sounds amazing. Coffee, vanilla, lavender, and raspberry are some of the main notes. So, uh, actually, it's uh, cappuccino as the note instead of coffee, but I prefer to say coffee instead because that's what it comes across. But this is a really, 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 really good designer coffee scent. It's it's shocking, to uh, to be honest with you, given the price. I mean, it is like $25, $28 on discounters. That's insane. The coffee in this is incredible. So it's coffee, it's spicy, it's warm, it's sweet, it's very, very alluring. I mean, if you spray this one on, just a couple sprays, you wanna be subtle with it, and you show up on that first date for the first time, you go in for a hug, she's gonna be like this, her eyes are gonna light up, and yeah, it's gonna be game over from there. It's just intriguing, you know, it is different. It's been out for a long time, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not a Dior Sauvage or a Dolce Gabbana The One or La Nuit de Lome. It's still kind of under the radar, in a way, at least compared to those. Definitely worth the 20 odd dollars for this one, time and time again. Again, I'm telling you, from what I've smelled on the designer side, one of the best coffee scents out there. To me, it's even better than like Halloween Man X in terms of getting a legitimate coffee note. Check it out if that's what you're after. Next up, Givenchy, gentlemen, bois, okay? Bois, or boise, whichever you prefer. So this one has sandalwood, uh, still has that iris in here. At first, I was kind of iffy on this one when it first came out. I smelled it, I'm like, yeah, it's the opening's nice, but then the dry down kind of got a little bit boring to me, but now I love it. The opening is great. So I believe there's a cacao in here as well. Honestly, the note breakdown has left me. I know for sure the sandalwood and the iris. I think cacao gives off the smooth chocolatey smell mixing with the sandalwood, giving a creaminess. The iris still giving some of the floral component that you get like from the eau de parfum. Uh, there's a whole lot of goodness going on here. From opening to dry down, it is smooth and creamy and sweet. Making this really, really nice for a date first date, great impression. So this one overall, I guess, would be considered a bit more mainstream compared to Gentleman Eau de Parfum, which is, you know, the iris vanilla scent smelling like Dior Homme Intense. Those do have just a bit more of a, I don't know, bit more of a challenging aspect, especially Dior Homme Intense. Um, the Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum does kind of tame it back and make it even more accessible, but this is even more accessible than both of those in terms of just likability. I mean, just about anyone is gonna smell this and love it, whether it be you, the guy who's choosing to purchase this and, and wear it, you're most likely gonna really enjoy how it smells and also your date, the, the girl you're going out with or your girlfriend or even your wife or whatever, she's probably gonna like this as well. It's, it's just very likable and that makes this great for a first impression. Next up, Prada Luna Rosa Black. I love it. This is kind of another one where I don't really try to exclude it in lists because I could put this in just about any sort of date night, night out, cooler weather type of video. I could seriously put this in about any of them. And for the most part, I do. I don't try to hold back on this one. I think it came out in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, so not too long ago. And it's pretty well regarded in the community. But it's not like you know, the other popular scents that we've talked about earlier in the video, it still is kind of, you know, staying in its own lane and kind of just doing its own thing. Tonka bean, amber, and angelica are some of the main notes. So first two are pretty standard. You know what those smell like. The angelica kind of gives off even more of a, a musky woodiness. So overall, this fragrance is warm, powdery, and musky. There's really not a whole lot to it. From a complexity standpoint, it's really quite simple but it's simple enough while still having a bit of a uniqueness about it that it makes it work like crazy. Again, they've struck a really good balance here of just you know not trying to stuff a whole bunch of notes in here and make it crazy, but it's also not super, super you know basic either. It just is right there in the middle, making it work really well. So warming and powdery and ultimately very inviting. For a first date, this one will kill it every time. It's a Prada, so the quality is top-notch. And 
you know, Prada in general just makes classy fragrances for men, and this is still one of them. Even though it's not their traditional soapy, clean, fresh scent, it still maintains a uh, classy, masculine, elegant type of smell. So we're getting down to the end of this one. Stronger with you, absolute, or absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, that's what it is. So this one has chestnut. It's got rum, it's got vanilla. So what I really like about this one and what I was excited about when I first saw it come out and I checked out the note breakdown was the chestnut's back. So if you remember the original Stronger With You had that chestnut note, it was really quite distinct and it was very unique. I really enjoy that part about it. Uh, intensely came out, they took that away, and then we had Freeze, and obviously it wasn't going to be in Freeze. I think there was, what, the leather edition, Stronger With You, leather, and the gold bottle. Didn't have it there either, and now finally we got Absolute, and they brought it back. So this kind of does full circle. It ties back to the original, but also makes a stop along the way and hits intensely as well. Just kind of does a loop through and just kind of connects back those three main sweet ones and just creates something that's uh, an improvement all around, in my opinion. For me, my favorite of the line. You get that rum, so it's a nice booziness. You get a nice sweet vanilla. It's balsamic. It's kind of, dare I say, nutty from the chestnut. Kind of smells like uh, sitting by the fireplace roasting some marshmallows or something. It is really, really nice. Great for winter time, but also very solid for a first date, first impressions. It has that sweetness about it, that modern, new, trendy sweetness, and this type of thing works like crazy. The original Stronger With You got hyped up a lot due to the fact that it is a great compliment getter. Same goes for this one. Second to last fragrance, we have Le Mal, Le Parfum. Really, really solid release here. In fact, I am super impressed with this one, and I have been ever since it first came out. Vanilla, cardamom, and lavender are some of the main notes. So it's sweet, it's a bit fresh from the lavender, it's oriental from the cardamom. There's also oriental notes. Yeah, I definitely pick up on some of those, but a lot of it is the cardamom. This is just so well done and so addicting. Rumor has it that this is going to take place of Ultra Male. Ultra Male's been just weird in terms of in stock, out of stock, reformulation changes. It, it went from BPI to something else, different supplier, whatever. It's been all over the place, a whole bunch of changes with it. It's been speculated to be discontinued multiple times, I feel like. If you look on For Granted Cuts, like every few months, is Ultra Male discontinued? Everyone starts freaking out and then it gets back in stock and they're like, no, no, we're good. We're good, we're good. Two months later, it's out of stock and people start freaking out again. <laughs> so you never really know what's going on with it. And it's always been that way. Stock has always been kind of weird. It's always been a bit more expensive at discounters as well. Now, I'm not hating on Ultra Male. I love it. I really do. It's one of my favorite designers because of that pear vanilla. It's super unique. So not hating here. I really like it. I hope they don't discontinue it. Um, but it, from what I've heard, it sounds like it may go in that direction because now we have this. They're quite different, in fact, very different, but it does take bits and pieces. So the way I've described uh, Le Parfum is that it takes the, the sweetness overall and the vanilla from Ultra Male. It takes the uh, lavender traditional Le Mal DNA from the original Le Mal, and then on top of those two, it adds in an oriental feel, like the cardamom and the oriental notes. So you kind of get this mismatch of a couple other scents from the line and then their own unique twist. And that's kind of how I describe it. And it seems to hold up pretty well because really it does kind of have a nuances of all of them, but yet still not a direct clone of any of them. So it's really nice, very appealing, very sexy, very warming, spicy, inviting, cozy, great for a date night, great for a first impression. This one here is solid. If you've never been a fan of the Lamal Flankers, you might really like this one. Last up, we have a, a cheapie here. Vince Camuto, Terra Extreme, Rum, Vanilla, and Tonka Bean are some of the main notes. So pretty standard, no breakdown. Vanilla, Tonka Bean is everywhere these days for good reason, and I'm happy about it. I love it. And also the rum. So it's uh, their take on a, a warmer, boozier, sweeter scent for cooler weather and for evenings. I've talked about this one a little bit here recently on the channel as I've kind of discovered it, um, and it, it's really nice. Fragrance net, $35. You don't find fragrances that are this style in that price range that often, and that's why I'm so excited about it. When it comes down to it, comparing this to some other more expensive, higher end, uh, fragrances that pull off a similar thing with the similar type of notes, it is inferior. But you're also paying 
quite a bit less for this one. So if you are on a bit of a budget or you're wanting to start to getting into some sweeter, boozier scents and you don't know if you're gonna like it and you wanna start out with something that is more affordable, this is a really nice kind of entry level scent into this type of genre. Not to mention, it's very mass pleasing, it's gonna work great on a date, great first impression type of scent. Vince Camuto, Terra Extreme, definitely check it out. That's gonna do it for me, guys. That was 10 fragrances that make a great impression on a first date. If you wanna stand out and you wanna secure that second date, even if you brutally mess things up and have some awkward moments and say stuff weird, uh, if you uh, choose any of these, you know, it's kinda grab some of these fragrances, you know, just pick up some of these fragrances, bro. Guaranteed a second date. If you want to pick any of these up for yourself, they will be linked down below. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance review. Good luck on that first date. Take care.